Storm the castle gates, battering rams up. Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. It's really good to be back with you this week with a build. I made a siege tower. Really nifty bit of scatter terrain. I don't know, does this count as terrain? It's really more of a vehicle. This is a bit of a departure from my usual builds because I didn't use foam for this. Often when I'm you know, building things to look like wood, I like to use foam because it's really easy to get nice looking realistic scale wood with foam. And I find that wood is kind of a pain in the butt to work with. But if you're willing to put in the effort and the time, you can get some really cool looking you know, builds out of wood. The process can actually be quite fun if you're in the mood for it. But why did I build this? Why did I build a siege tower? Well, I was inspired by the models from the sponsor of this week's video. Loot is a company that creates very detailed miniatures that you can 3D print at home. By joining as a monthly member, you get access to a different set of heroes, monsters, and sceneries every month. What makes Loot a bit different from other companies offering a similar service is that their miniatures tell a story. Each month, their campaigning heroes, Johnny, KX, and Korma, I hope I'm saying those right, will fight a new set of foes and get new items and abilities. From the June Goblin Trouble Bundle, I decided to print off a few of the infantry goblins. This was made incredibly easy as they don't only provide the STL files, the models all come pre-supported and they include the STL files as well as the Chi2 box files, making setting up the print a super easy and almost instant process. They also provide files for both 32 millimeter gaming scale and 70 millimeter scale for display painting. I'm by no means an expert printer yet, and the thing I struggle with the most is placing support, so having this done for me is a huge help. When you join, in addition to the current month, you will also get a super cool welcome pack full of really neat models. Further, Loot has a great painter on their team, and each month you'll get access to a painting guide for that month's boss. The monthly subscription fee is 15 bucks, but the first 100 people to sign up using the promo code in the video description below will pay only $10 a month forever. That's a third of the price reduced permanently for your membership forever. That's no joke. That's a pretty good discount. So if you're interested in signing up, use that code below. First hundred people can get that discount. I was thinking of these goblin minis as though they would be part of a large horde and I challenged myself to see what kind of paint job I could do in a very limited time. Loot provides detailed bases to print for every model, but I wanted generic scorched middle earth kind of bases. So I just used plain plastic bases and added some texture paste. I gave myself a strict time limit of two hours to do this and to paint all seven models. For me, this is a crazy time limit. I'm not that fast of a painter, but I wanted to see what I could pull off in that time, relying mostly on airbrush undershading and inks, followed by a bit of detail work. I ended up with a scheme I thought was more than acceptable. I'd be totally happy to have a legion of goblins printed up and painted just like this. But I guess I should probably start talking about the actual build. Wood. This build is basically entirely made from wood dowels of various sizes and coffee stir sticks. I prefer coffee stir sticks to popsicle sticks as they're thinner and narrower and just look a whole lot better at this scale. The reason building models out of this stuff is challenging is that it's all smooth. It really doesn't look like wood once painted. You need to put in some effort to carve up the pieces a bit beforehand to give them some variance and texture and character. Personally, I find the best way to do this is with a rotary tool and a sanding drum. This lets you really quickly make a smooth piece look like old hand-hewn lumber. Of course, you can do this with a knife, but it takes a lot longer and you often end up driving the blade into the grain and splitting the piece. Using the rotary tool is fast, but it creates a lot of dust. So I like to keep a shop vac running the whole time and sand right beside the hose. This sucks up basically all the dust you're making, but I still wear a mask and glasses through the whole process. 
just in case. The assembly here was very improvised, but there were a few important decisions I made before jumping in. One was to texture as many pieces as possible before starting to build. Doing as much of this ahead of time as you can handle before going completely bored out of your mind is really important. When you're constructing, you don't want to have to stop to sand more pieces, but inevitably you probably will end up having to do that, so just accept that fact. For measurements, I used the one inch grid on my cutting mat. This also helped me keep things somewhat square during the construction. Another decision I made early was to use PVA glue for assembly rather than hot glue. Now hot glue is a lot faster and in many ways a heck of a lot easier, but PVA in the end is far stronger and a lot cleaner. The downside is that it doesn't instantly hold, so you have to be more patient and careful while building. Which one you choose really comes down to the mood you're in. Sometimes banging together a build quickly with hot glue is fun, but sometimes the more deliberate and methodical method of using PVA is more satisfying and enjoyable. Both are totally fine. On this day, I was in the mood for the painstaking process of PVA glue and patience. At a certain point, I decided I wanted to make the top wall that drops down into a bridge to actually work. I'm not generally the type to want functional terrain in the sense that you can actually move the parts, but this seemed like a situation where it would actually be really cool if I did. I thought I could create a hinge using the plastic tube from a cotton swab and a metal wire. I think the idea was sound, but well, mm. In the end, I glued something wrong and it ended up all stuck together and wouldn't close. Rather than try to redo it, I just decided to remove the hinge entirely and make it stay permanently down. Wheels. I needed some wheels. There's actually a really easy way to make wooden wheels. If you have some mini bases like these ones that Reaper makes, you can use them as a great starting point. You can glue wood planks to them. The trick though is to rough up the surface first and use super glue to attach the stir sticks. You can then cut off the excess with scissors or clips and then use a rotary tool and a sanding drum to get them perfectly flush. A bit of paper for iron banding and boom, great looking wheels for wagons or whatever. I drilled in some holes for the axles. Once I had made my first one, it was really easy to use that one as a jig for the rest. I didn't have a bit that was quite the right size for the smaller dowels, so I made a hole that was just too small for the larger ones. This way I could carve them to a point and just wedge them in the hole. I really didn't think it would be worth the trouble to try and make these actually turn. There would just be too many ways for this to go wrong, and really, they don't need to turn to move it around on the gaming table. Plus, locking them in place is actually beneficial for most games, as you don't want them accidentally moving around during a game. 
While the glue on the wheels dried, it was the perfect time to make some quick ladders. Now it was time to paint, and I know some of you are thinking, it's already wood, why paint it to look like wood? Unpainted real wood just doesn't blend in well with all of the other painted stuff that you have. Your painted minis and other terrain will have a certain aesthetic, and you want all of your pieces to kind of mesh and vibe well together. Plain unpainted wood just stands out like crazy. This wood is also a very light yellow and looks like fresh pine, which isn't what I wanted. I wanted something that didn't look brand new. Plus, there's glue and paper all over this thing that wouldn't look right unpainted. You could just stain the wood and that can have a nice effect, but you need to do that before assembly because the glue that's on the wood will block the stain and it will just look terrible. Much like theater actors paint on giant eyebrows, even though they have real eyebrows, you want your stuff to look good from a few feet away on the table and an exaggerated paint job helps with this. Now I've got several videos showing how to paint wood schemes with craft paints and brushes. So on this one, I let myself try a more mature painting style using primarily the airbrush and inks. With a spray primer, white undershading, and two brown inks, I got an almost complete paint job in under 15 minutes, including dry time between coats. It's pretty amazing. It took longer to dry brush on some tan and paint out the little metal details than it did to spray all that wood. Using a brush on a piece with this many hard to reach little spots would have taken so much longer and I don't think it would have had even close to as nice of a result. After paint, the metal bands were looking a bit plain. Now, I'd love to have put on some raised rivets on these details, but that's actually quite tricky to do. Instead, I opted for using a pin to make some small screw holes. Adding small nail holes to all the wood planks also added a nice little detail. Next time I do this before paint, however. Now for the battering ram. None of my dowels were big enough, so I turned to nature. I cut a few branches of different diameters and baked them in the oven to disinfect. This seemed especially important since some of these branches I found had been used by squirrels to chew on and who knows what kind of diseases they are carrying. Actually hanging this thing in place was by far the hardest part of this whole build. I used some miniature chain from the jewelry department of Michaels, but man, actually getting it mounted in there, I really can't describe how exceptionally challenging this was. In the end, I got it, but it wasn't as well done as I would have hoped. I messed around with some washes and rusty pigment powder on the chains, and overall this just created a mess and I didn't like the results at all. So just ignore this whole part. I should have just stuck with washes. Unfortunately, the ladder hole that I had made didn't work with the hanging battering ram. I didn't think that through enough during the build. But I didn't let myself get too upset about this. I just glued the ladder to the outside and moved on. It, honestly, it looks fine. It's not even that big of a deal. I really enjoyed the process of building this project. It's sometimes nice to work with materials and mediums outside of your go-to usual stuff. Working with wood still is not my favorite though because of all the front end prep work involved. I mean, I guess foam also has a lot of milling work, but somehow I personally find it less annoying. Balsa wood would have been a nice alternative. It's a lot easier to work with than pine craft sticks, but I just don't have a source of it that's readily available and cheap where I live. If you do, that's a great option and you should give it a go. 
So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments section below. If you did like this video, hit that like button. I gotta say thanks to my sponsors, Loot, for sponsoring this build, inspiring it, giving me some new cool minis for my game, and thanks for supporting YouTubers. The help from sponsors like Loot helps me help you. If you want to pick up any tools or supplies for your own building needs, maybe you want to get a rotary tool to do this tedious sort of work, check out blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have my essential equipment page. I list most of the stuff that I use regularly. I explain why I use it and I have links to where you can purchase it yourself. And last, if you really enjoy these videos that I make and you want to help me keep making them, the best way you can do that is by supporting the channel on Patreon. It's through those funds that I am able to dedicate my time and energy into making these videos and running this channel. And it's through that support that I'm able to support my family doing it. So it's really appreciated. And I'd love to have you as the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. That's it for this week, guys. Cheers. I'll see you again next week.